Yes, my family, my family, greetings to you on this wonderful day. With me today is the President General of the U UNIA, Mr. Uh, Cleophos Miller. And today we will be talking, looking at our national and international hero, Marcus Mosiah Garvey's philosophy and thoughts, and we will be focusing on repatriation. So I warmly welcome you, uh, Mr. Cleophos. How are you today? In this program, and um, as, I, as I've got an old saying that each day that I wake up and I get up, that's 99% of the bell, I can handle the one percent. So I'm doing excellent, I'm doing bad. <laughs> Thank you so very much. It's, it's wonderful having you today to talk with us on this uh, important and relevant topic about repatriation, because I understand that we had just uh, celebrated 400 years of our time and our time in slavery, so to speak. And many persons have been going back to our motherland. So at this time, could you tell us a little about yourself and what you do? Well, actually, I, I'm, my, my name's again, it's Cleophis Miller Jr. And I'm President General of the Universal Negro Improvement Association and the African Community League. And for the last about 30, some 30, 40 years, we've been trying to uh, bring our people together. Uh, as you well know, the organization was founded by the Honorable Marcus Garvey. He founded it in Jamaica in 1914, moved to the United States in 1917, incorporated in New York in 1918, and then later on it was incorporated, it, there was a split within the organization. And then uh, later on, he created 1929 in August of 1929 world. Then it, uh, he, when he passed away, the presidency fell to uh, James Stewart. He moved to Ohio and incorporated the UNIA August 1929 of the world in 1942 in Ohio. So I've been uh, picking up the, some of the, uh, the things that had not been done since 1971 up until now trying to bring the organization back together because of the splits and stuff so we can finish our mission that the honorable marcus god has started about repatri repatriation going back to africa which we were supposed to have done in uh, liberia but that fell to the wayside but uh as you mentioned earlier uh the year 400 years after slavery the uh continent of, of africa created a program through in ghana called the year of return and so that actually happened in the year 2000 we're going to 2001 a continuation of it and we're, we're excited about the prospect because now we'll begin to visualize some of the honorable marcus god's dream about people actually going back to africa not to say people were not on the african continent at first but they're going back in bigger droves now and the honorable marcus god said that all of us uh africa don't want us all because we're all not suited to go to bed but those who can go back and who could contribute to the the betterment and the upliftment of us as a people who wasn't going to do anything but enhance uh people of africa or people of africa descent all around the world hey awesome awesome i'm sorry if i was too long when no no that's awesome that's wonderful Yes, so repatriation means going back, and in this case, going back to our motherland. You noted that uh, the Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey stated that not necessarily all of us will need to go back. However, we, because the motherland needs development, we as a people who can go back uh, to build our continent uh, the motherland is really calling on us to help in that development because once one one of us is elevated you know once the continent is developed i believe all of us as africans around the world we will benefit from that as well are you in agreement with yes. that <laughs> yes. yes yes i'm in agreement with that because you know uh when you really think about uh, 
the past, there's been a misnomer, a misconception or a misunderstanding because people in Africa didn't want to, uh, to associate with people in America because the people in, uh, in Africa said the people in America were lazy and they had everything, you know, that they needed and wasn't taking advantage of it. While the people in America were saying Africa has everything because all the men are riches and they're not taking rich, uh, care of it. So if we were to bring both of us together with the riches and the knowledge, then we're in a better position to help our people worldwide if we just go ahead on and do those things. So those are some of the things that we in the second uh, century, the second 200 year century with the UNA are trying to accomplish in terms of reconnecting with our long lost brothers and sisters on the continent of Africa and all parts of in all phases that we can to uplift, to give them some uh, words of wisdom, not to come in and control them, not to tell them what to do, but to work hand in hand so we can work together to rebuild Africa. And then we can do that in a lot of ways from an economic, social, educational uh, standpoint. But we need to do all those things. And the creating the schools, uh, the bit, uh, creating businesses, and then taking control of our own self, our own economic uh, welfare, as opposed to letting someone else tell us when, where, and what to do. Yes, most certainly. Because we as Africans in the, on the continent, in the diaspora, we are known to be the world builders, building civilizations from the start. So we have the capacity uh, to do what we can for our uh, motherland and for us as a people. We don't have to depend on outside uh, forces, as you would rightly say. Um, so why is this re repatriation important? You have alluded to development and so on. Why do we really need to go and help in this development? Well, first of all, we need to go back and, 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 and connect with our roots. Uh, we have nothing on our own. When we, when we were taken away from Africa and, and dispersed in all parts, of, different parts of the world, then we went into a situation where we own nothing for ourselves. No major uh, in, uh, enterprises, no major businesses, uh, banks, uh, electricity, uh, components, all, none of that. So, if we are to go back, and uh, you know, Africa is, is where our, our birthrights and hell, all the riches and minerals, and we're allowing other people to actually come from other countries, and even in Africa, tell tell Africans what to do, and they can't even use their own products and stuff because they're serious, they sign long time leases, a hundred year leases and stuff, and give up their mineral rights and everything things to other people. So. We need to go back and try to confront that situation in Africa with our African uh, brothers and sisters, as well as trying to uh, work out our differences in the United States and other parts, because we were the builders, as you said earlier. We created these, these, these big multi-corporation cities and whatever, and, and, and put them in a position to control us. So we need to be able to come out of the, the situation of letting them control us and we control ourselves. I tell people all the time, we're just like our bears. And there's certain parts of the year in certain parts of the country, bears go into hibernation. And they sleep through the whole winter. And then they come back out after that part and they take care of business, all the things they need to do for natural inhabitants and to survival. But we as a people, we went into the hibernation and we're still sleeping. We have not woke up. We don't realize that the world is passing us by. And the more we let the world pass us by, the farther we get behind. And then we're trying to catch up, but we never catch up. Now is the time that we need to do that. And then our youth are our future. Because a lot of things that I've done or try to do over the past it's going to go by, you know, and so we need to start training our youth to take our places to move forward so they can tackle some of these problems and in, in situations that we have not been able to do. The Honorable Marcus Garvey and, and proud members of the Universal Negro Improvement Association set up a pattern 
They gave you a, a, us a blueprint. And so it's just left up to us to follow that blueprint and use it for the mass of um, um, for the masses to help us as the people worldwide, as opposed to looking at our, at ourselves as individuals. We're not an individual. It's always been said that the village raised the child. So if we don't go in and help each other and connect them when there's wrong or whatever from the standpoint, and come to us at the aid and support, then we're going to be lost. When you look at the other races of people. They may argue bigger and fight, but when the when the rubber meets the road, what is important that they do something or, uh, or to uplift their people, they all come together and amass and do that. We don't do that. We're taking on other people's identities and stuff. And it's important for us to go back to Africa so we can find out what our true heritage, what our rituals, and what we need to do. You know, I, 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 I'm often being told by people that the African people are taking on the identity of the, of the countries that, are, that, that, that control them. They're losing their language and they're losing their ideals and cultures and stuff. We, need to, we don't need to lose that. We need to keep that. That's important so our younger, uh, the youth coming up can understand and know and set them on the path to understand and know who we are and that we are the kings and the queens. We were the builders and the educators and stuff. Why did we give that away and let somebody else come in and teach us about their history and their culture and throw ours to the wayside? No, we need to go back to Africa so we can continue that. Beautiful, wonderful. Um, I see a quote here from the Honorable uh, Marcus Messiah Garvey, a people without the knowledge of their past history, origin, and culture is like a tree without roots. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. That, that, that is true. If you don't know where you're coming from, you never know where you're going. And yeah. you're going to always be lost, and you can always be uh, caught up in a situation where you're fooled and you're tricked. So it's good to go back and start from scratch. And if you can't go there, let some flag on to someone else, find out for someone else. We have a we're notorious about not reading and doing uh, 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 inquiring about various things and doing research on things. We take other people's word for it as opposed to going and find out for ourselves. We need to research. We need to study. Every time you, every chance you get, we should be having some type of book or talking to somebody about knowledge. There's street knowledge and there's book knowledge. And when I say street, that is that village, because in that village, they've gone through a lot of trials and tribulations. They've gone through a lot of things in their lives that can pass down to us so we can move forward as a people. Yes. I realize that the Black struggle, so to speak, is global. It's not just in Af on the continent of Africa, the black race is, say, suffering for the most part. It's all over. We as a race seem to be on the, uh, on the lower end of things. We might have a few who have made it and have been uh, very successful, but on a wider scale, it seems as if the Africans are the most who are struggling. And what I am hearing is that until we come together as African people globally and start building the continent, without that, then we will go nowhere. You, you're right. Uh, if, if, if we don't, uh, it, it starts off with education. And if we don't educate each other, we're going to perish. There's no question about it. We have to be able to do that. And as, 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 as we said earlier, the only reason that we don't move forward, that we're not progressing, is that the, the other races of people have used the, the method of divide and conquer. They divided us, and we're so uh, ignorant to the fact that that's, this is what they're doing, we try to imitate them and, and do impressions of them and to have what they have as opposed to having an understanding that what we have is all the richest in the world because we had the education we had the knowledge and technology we taught them 
They were in the cave and stuff, sleeping and, and rolling and whatever, eating each other and stuff from that standpoint. So how is it that we can allow a, a, a race of people who are like that turn around and rule us? And it's only because we, we've been sleeping and we have not been taking over what we need to do as a people. And if we are to be successful, if we are to move forward, sometimes you have to lose races of uh, generations of, of a race of people in order to move forward. So we can't take the older ones who have the knowledge and to teach the middle in between, then we need to lose one section of us as a people and move on to another section who has not been tarnished or tainted with all the bad habits, ideals, and thoughts and stuff and teach them the right way. And once we teach and educate them to own something as opposed to going to school or to get learning just to work for somebody else, work for yourself. Have your own business, your own enterprise, a, um, um, a economic system and stuff. Once you're on a level playing ground like that with all other races of people, then you can master, you can do anything you want in this world. And that's what we have to work toward. Yes, definitely so. Yes. And I also hear that for us to go back to Africa, it is uh, good for us to have a sort of a healing, go through a, a process of healing. Because no doubt what has happened to our four parents during the transatlantic slave trade even today it has affected us psychologically whether we believe it or not i know personally that that you know has had some effect on me because their blood runs through my dna and yes so what what is your take on that does this uh slave you, trade right. You can you you can take the as I say you can take the the person from the village or where they they where they were domiciled at that point in time, but you can't take that tradition and that history and that and that blood out of the veins of of that, that of that family member. It's gonna always be there in some form or some fashion. It just has to be awakened or kindled so they can understand. We can understand and know what it is and what it's all about. And again, it's good to go. And still, and, and to see firsthand, to understand and know and understand about your background. That way, now all those unanswered questions that you have, they're there. People can tell you all the time about how bad it is to be here or how bad it is to be there. But the problem is, until you actually gone down there. You can take a, a lot of people's word for it, uh, 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 and, and when you take that people, those people's word for it, there has to be somebody that you truly endear, understand, and know and trust, because those people are going to be the ones who are going to be telling you the truth, Then, as opposed to someone who's always being yes or saying yes and, and never saying no, never questioning your man, never challenging your man and giving you the pie in the sky as if it's, it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Those are the people you have to be leery about at times as opposed to be getting, getting down into the real nitty gritty and understanding and ignoring what life is about. What, what are the issues and the problems that our forefathers uh, um, went through that we can we can look at today and enhance ourselves as a race of people, and all the things that have been happening nowadays with the George uh, George case and the uh, Floyd case, and and uh, many of us, and uh, even in countries today where you you don't even have the rights to vote and stuff. You're still looked on as child slaves, as if they own you. And they may take it and put it in another form of fashion and not call it slavery, but it is slavery, uh, institutional slavery that they're doing today. And until we can be able to get on the same footing, on the same ground that our, our other races of people are, then we're going to be always lost. And it's strange that I'm saying uh, other races of people, because if we go back to the beginning, there was only one race of people. And that was us. That's us. So now what we're doing is we're looking at that through generations of generations of people. We've separated ourselves from each other. And all people are not bad. I'm not looking at all that the other races of people saying that they're the worst people in the world because they came from us. 
So what we have to do is understand and know that man can, humanity is the bigger role that we have to look at. And we have to sort out those ones who are trying to keep us from that focusing on that goal, that accomplishment to enhance us as the people worldwide. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes, yes. Uh, recently I interviewed uh, the His Majesty King Bungane III. And they are, his kingdom, the Embo kingdom, they are looking at seeing if they can reunite us as a people and, you know, to have an atonement done, uh, some sort of reconciliation, forgiveness, so that we can find healing. Because some of our own people, some of the kings in those uh, during the slavery period, they sold us, our four parents, some of them did that. So he's going to embark on a journey uh, of atonement to get us together and so that we can find healing. So that as we go back and we can work when we have been healed and getting back together, we can uh, have that true spirit, so to speak, that um, Holy Spirit within us to carry on the work that our ancestors were doing and living in harmony. I'd love to, to be involved in that with you uh, because you know I'm, 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 I'm reminded of, a, of another uh, leader that we had at one point in time, a Malcolm X. And uh, he was a, um, a member of the Nation of, uh, of Islam. And he had to break away from that. And he went on a pilgrimage to Mecca. Uh, you know, and to find and to and to, to visit with all other races of um, people of, of different races who were also Muslims, and their mind had been distorted. He his mind was distorted. He didn't understand and know the true meaning of what it what meant to be a Muslim, and that all these people had the same commonality and working toward the same goal. It, but his mind had been torted, taunted. Or, 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 or to a certain degree, uh, and, and a lot of things have been said to him that didn't come out to be the same thing. So what you're talking about with this with this king who wants to have this ritual or spiritual, I love to be a part of that. We because when you look at the UNIA and all the different organizations you have in the world, the Universal Negro Improvement Association, founded by the Honorable Marcus Garvey, is the only organization today that reaches and binds and touches us as a people worldwide, no matter wherever you domicile, and reach and connect and can bring us back. So those are the things we have to look at. While people have taken, they talk about the Honorable Marcus Gov and they talk about the Universal Negro Improvement Association. Well, you're talking about it, and at the same time, we hear when you're taking bits and pieces of the organization and you creating it for yourselves and taking it and looting and then taking away from it and doing things for selfish reasons and stuff. Why work against it? Bring it all back home, bring it back where it needs to be. And once we do that and we connect with the continent of Africa, then we're not gonna do anything but just sprout and, and grow. And then we can be on that same plane as all other people are. So those are the things I'm looking for. So I challenge, I, I'd love to get in contact with the, with the king that you're talking about so we can uh, get on a joint venture working together to make that happen. Because if, if, you, if you're going to do spiritual cleaning, then we need to do it worldwide and we need to do it wherever we domicile. And regardless of what we call, because some people get caught up in names. And, and, and because, you, because you're called a Negro, because you're called Black, because you're called Af well, even in Africa, the, you know, a lot of people they didn't look at themselves as being African. They went by their tribal names, and so uh, in the now today they're they're getting away from their tribal names. And if they if the French was overruling them, or they go back to the French thing or whatever. We need to come back and and then come home to a, a reality and say, okay, we are this this global masses of people that have been separated through the years and we've been branched off to through different societies different cultures or whatever from that standpoint and let's deal with that 
and let's, let's get a, a, a sense of commonality among myself and find out what we need to do and wh- how we need to get it back where we can uh, grow and, and flourish. Yes, yes. Uh, there is an organization called I, I, AID, AIDO. I'm not sure if you heard of it. AIDO. No, I have not. Right. And they talk about um, Africa roots. Right now, I'm going to play uh, an ad. I hope that the Facebook doesn't block it, but I was told that it's okay to play uh, from the person I got it from. So I'm just going to play this short advertisement about uh, atonement. I'm not sure if you will be able to see it, but it will be played just for uh, uh, maybe less than a minute. Okay, there we had it, the advertisement. I, I doubt if you could have heard it, but the audience, no, I right, I the audience would have heard no. it. Okay. So, now, who 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 started the A A A I D I? Was this they, the former ambassador to the African Union? Well, it's it's a whole kingdom of 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 royalties. The royalties, really. Um, the uh, His Royal Highness Paul uh, Eganda, uh, Queen Sheba, Doctor Miranda Barrow, Harris Barrow, so many of them. I will okay. have to send you the clip. It's just royalty all over. Yes, and you have to send me that clip. I've been in touch with them, so we we need to make well, this well, connection. We, we, yeah, yeah, we need to make that connection. We really yes, do. Yes, yes. The certain. only kings that I've the only kings that I've really uh, c- come into co- to connection with right now are in Ghana, and that would be uh, Okatachi of Manfi, the uh, Okatachi or Manfi the Third, Nana old Nana, I better say Nana, okay. and he's in Ghana. Uh, and then uh, you got, you got a uh, Obakasi, uh, Apa, who's actually working there in Ghana as well. But uh, that's not to say that that uh, as we move forward, and as, as a matter of fact, we have to get you to come in. You're already a member of the organization through through, through because you're of of, of, of African blood. You're automatically a member. You're just not active. So, and you're beginning to become active a little bit here now. And we have to just bring you on in, into the fold. That's right. Because you can actually help enhance us as we move forward as well. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, there were two, I think there were two have been in the Caribbean and the Americas maybe since last year or sometime this year. But because of the COVID situation, they had to postpone. Yes. And I think they will be out yes. uh, next year, 2022, God's willing. Yes, mm-hmm. so great yes. things are are in the pipeline for us. Yes. yes. So make sure that you make sure that you uh, get that connection for me, so we can get yes. in contact. Going. Definitely. So Definitely. Going yes. Is there anything else you want to talk to us about? Uh, as it relates to repatriation or Marcus Messiah Garvey. Um, how did you get started as, as even though you gave me the background <laughs> of, how did you get to be a Garvey height? Well, you know, it, it, it's strange. Uh, and it's a, it, if you got time, then I can tell you a little story about myself. Because Go ahead. I, 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 I'm, I'm from the United States and I was born in a little, uh, little town in Arkansas called Gould, Arkansas. My my grandparents were, uh, were they were sharecroppers. And so uh, if you understand anything about share, sharecropping is that you, you worked on the plantation 
for other for other people. And so you raise their 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 goods and services and they gave you a little piece of land of your own to share crop in order for you to survive while you're taking care of their masses. So I was uh, as a, as a little little boy growing up, I spent the summers with my grandparents down there helping them uh with their fields, get up every, every morning, uh slot, had a routine. Slap the hogs, fed the chicken, and milk the cows, and then go out in the fields and start to harvest and plant and grow the fields. So as a, it, it, it became it became to me as a little young guy around the age of maybe nine, ten years old that this is something that I didn't want to do for the rest of my life. And I said that if I could ever get in a position where I could help some of our people not to have be able to go through some of the trials and tribulations that I did as a young man, that's what I was going to do. And so it never dawned on me that, uh, you know, uh, uh, that once I got older that I would be in this position because my, my task was to get out of that small community and to go through the world, through the world and find out what the world is about. My only problem I had, because I came from a very poor family and I was looking for opportunity to get out. So I started playing sports. I felt that sports was going to be the only avenue to get me out. And so I, I became pretty good at that and eventually wound up being a professional athlete. And then from there, uh, uh, you know, I got into it and, and uh, that was still on the back of my mind trying to find out ways to help our people. And when I got out of professional football, I wanted to go into politics and find out what politics were about. And because I know it's more, it's more uh, politics and professional sport than running for the president of the United States. And so if you can find out the difference in, uh, with the uh, other two, then, uh, then, then I have a better way of looking at life as I got one from one career to another. So uh, when I've got into uh, the politics of the world, as opposed to professional I in mean, sports, I found out it was the same animal, but with a different name. And so uh, it was still that same rat race where the, 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 the rich were the rich and the poor were the poor. So you had to get that blend in between it. And so I became a member of what they called a, a caucus that was, uh, that was uh, headed by one of the great congressmen, uh, Louis Stokes. So I got involved in that, and I found out real quick that I didn't like the politics in, in either one of them because the grassroots person was the one that always came in at the end on the end, and they, and they got the shortcomings. And so, what actually happened is that I got uh, very dis disgusted with it, and I began to want to get out of that 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 crowd. And I was and I, I said I was going to be leaving. And there was a little old man in the back of the room that had been watching my every move. And, uh, and so uh, things didn't happen the way I wanted it to happen with the, with the caucus. And, and I was disgruntled about it. He saw it. And so I told him I was leaving. So he said, hey, come here, young fellow. You're involved in the wrong thing. Let me tell you about this organization. And so uh, I'd just gone through a lot of stuff with this, with the caucus and everything. I didn't want to hear about another organization I said it's time for me to go and find out how to make myself my, my path within the world so it took him six months and after six months of actually talking to me and telling me certain things finally i was able to sit down to try to listen to what he said and when he told me about it, it was the university Negro pool association founded by marcus garvey and this gentleman was the president general of the organization and then and so when he did that, and I'm looking at it, and I'm saying, okay. And then he told me to read and educate and find out when I started doing Because I didn't know about a Marcus Garvey or anything else growing up as a young kid and coming through high school and even going through professional sports. It wasn't until after I got out of professional sports that I found out about the UNI and Marcus Garvey. And when I did, it just opened up and said, oh, my God, this is what I've been looking for all my life. Why didn't I know about this organization? And the thing was, I was intending to only be in the organization probably for about four or five years and move on to something else. Some 40 some years uh, later, I'm still involved in, in moving forward. <laughs> wow, wow. I am so honored to have you with us. I am originally from Jamaica. So, you know, Marcus Garvey is one of my national heroes. 
Yes, yes. Yes, yes, and, yes. And, 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 and the thing about it is anywhere we go, there are going to be trials and tribulations. Marcus Garvey had trials and tribulations when he founded the organization in Jamaica, and they couldn't thrive there because of the politics and whatever from that standpoint. So that's why he moved away from there and went to other. As a matter of fact, he was pretty much kicked out of Jamaica. And that's why he came to the United States and later on to just die as a national hero because of all the things he's done. Well, we need a lot of more national heroes. We need a lot of more other people of our race that can stand up and leave a vision uh, about what we need to do as a people in order to enhance ourselves and to grow. And so that's what I, I envision. That's what I want to see with the, uh, with the youth coming up. Uh, again, the, the forefathers with the organization before me, they took it to one level. And then now, wherever they could take it. So it's our task now. I'm taking it to as much of a level as I can. Now it's time. I'm getting to be an old man. It's time to get the uh, youth more involved in what we do because, as I said, they're our future. And then to educate them, them and teach them and let them take it to another level. And who knows where this is going to end? Marcus said, God would say, I'll see you in the whirlwind. The whirlwinds are turning now. With all the things that actually happen now, and it is time for our, us to take our rightful place as an organization in the world and make sure that we put our brand and put, no, the brand has already been there, but to get more actively involved in with the uh, the Universal Negro Improvement Association and Marcus Garvey's ideas and thoughts. So let's not get it twisted now. People talk about Marcus Garvey all the time and forget about the organization. The organization was nothing without Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey was nothing without the organization. So they go hand in hand. And when we start trying to tear it away, and we, we, we begin to tear down the moral fibers of what Marcus Garvey and the organization is about. And that's life, too. When we begin to tear different parts away and separate it, like the village raising a child, and then all of a sudden you get grown or you think you're grown, or you know everything, you tear away from that village where you're tearing away from, from the moral fabric as opposed to bringing it back closer and the teaching, the educating those, what those values and stuff about. And that's what we have to do as a people. Yes. As we prepare to wrap up soon, my brother, um, are there any organizations that are prepared to take us back? Are you know, oh, yes. because yes, instead of yes. going on an individual, you know, uh, travel, yes, as, yes. As, as a matter of fact, again, uh, as I said to you earlier, we were a part of that, that, that year return that was in Africa. As a matter of fact, there were one of the, the kings in Africa that was given away land in, in Ghana for you to come back and repatriate if you if you chose to. And so we have a program that we can get in contact with them. They can bring you in, uh, educate you, teach and train you uh, about the cultures and, and how to how to mix and mingle without, you know, uh, going and being lost. So we have that program and uh, in, 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 uh, the repatriation program in, in, uh, in, in Ghana. But also we have another program. We, we created an organization called the Alliance, Economic uh, Exodus, Exodus Alliance. And there's a, a program called uh, Sankofa that a young lady is created and, that, and, and that's a part of us, where it's to raise the money and stuff to actually help people go back also to Africa and to create businesses and different things of that nature. And then we have in, in Senegal a, a part of the Exodus Alliance where the, the, we're involved in different communities and stuff there also we can bring you back in and, 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 and house you in, get you involved in the business uh, community from an investment standpoint, whatever. Whatever you need, pretty much, is, is you want to go back on that, that journey uh, back to our homeland, we can point you into the direction to do it because we have those common, those connections and stuff. Yes. Thank you so very kindly. Uh, do you have any final words? Uh, to say to our people in the diaspora or on the continent of Africa at this time? I say to you, 
uh, long lost brothers, sisters, cousins, relatives, whoever, whoever you may be. Let's not take another 400 years to say, okay, let's find ways to reconnect, reunite. Let's put our minds and our thoughts and ideas together because we were the inventors. When you look at all of the inventions that have happened to date, pretty much, most of them, uh, about 90% of them came from us. But the problem is, is that we allow someone to steal it from us. So our ideas, our thoughts and stuff should not be stolen. It should be transferred down through generations of people and kept within our family to enhance the mankind worldwide. So if we can find solutions and ideas and thoughts where we can get on the same page from the standpoint, let's do it. Not yesterday, not tomorrow, today. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much. Thank you so much, President General. Thank you. It's such an honor and knowing that uh, you are from the UNIA, that our Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey has started. I trust that we can, in this 21st century, rise up as our forerunner and messenger, uh, the, right, the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. Yes. Yeah, I need to say one other thing too. As yes. I said earlier, as I said earlier, there are different splits and stuff within the organization. And uh, I would caution a lot of people who want to come in and be a part. Let's, let's not look at all the negative things that other the other or people out there who are taking parts, bits and pieces of the name and claiming for themselves and calling themselves the UNIA and uh, giving a false impression to take money and stuff from you. Do your research. Really do your research and study about not just this organization, but any organization that you get involved in. But it, because we're talking about this, don't get involved with the wrong, wrong people who are out there for themselves, self-preservation, and just to take money from you and don't want to see how people move forward. I caution you not to do that and to look at the positive aspect of, uh, of what this organization can bring and do, but do your research to make sure that you get involved in the right one. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, yes, my sisters and brothers, there we have it. Uh, repatriation. We are calling for persons to go back to the motherland uh, and to help in its development because development for the continent of Africa is development for the Black race globally. So once again, I thank you so much for joining us. I trust that you have benefited from what our dear brother, uh, President General Cleophus uh, Miller Jr. had to say to us. So until next time, take care. God bless you. One love and stay safe.